Hello and welcome to The Lou Review. This is your host, Rosa Hart, and I am here today with the owners of Modica. Would you two like to introduce yourselves? Sure. So I'm Eric. Um, I have about a decade of experience in mixology and cocktails. Founded a couple restaurants here in town and met JD myself, met JD in business school getting our MBAs. Yeah, and I'm JD. I didn't learn how to make a cocktail until I was 28 years old <laughs> and took a really different path to, to launching Modica. So right after college, I joined the Peace Corps for a couple of years, and then I hopped around and did a few different things. So I was a high school teacher, I worked at a nonprofit, and then eventually worked in sales and marketing at a Fortune 500 company before meeting Eric. Well, as it happens, you're the second person to be on this podcast that served in the Peace Corps oh, really? first. Yeah. yeah, that is so random. I love this. <laughs> Who's wow. the other one? Um, his name is Rob. He's a farmer. His uh, farm business is called Naked Greens, and he's at the Jefferson okay. Town Farmer's Market, and he's at several farmer's markets throughout the week. His uh, produce is featured at Luvino as well as Brasserie Provence yeah, know, and several him. others. Very cool. Very cool. Love yeah. that. Yeah. So that is so cool. Uh, if thank you, you haven't met him, you yeah. should. Where did you serve? In I was in Corps? Ethiopia. Okay. He was in Senegal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Man. And he also, just like you, JD, pulled that out as a surprise oh. once we started the <laughs> podcast. So I was like, well, okay. <laughs> I don't think it's been like 12 years ago, so I never yeah. think about it. But uh-huh. Well, our, that's wonderful. So uh, what is Modica to start with? Yeah, so Modica, believe it or not, it's the world's first superfood cocktail and mocktail mixer. And what does that mean? People always want to know. So it's all natural. We don't use any preservatives, nothing fake. And then it's made with superfoods, vitamins, and electrolytes. So you get that extra boost of well-being. And the name Modica comes from the word modicum, which is just a small amount of a great thing. And we loved the idea that you could have a drink that has all of these small benefits associated with it just to make your cocktail that much better for you. That is so great. And I'm glad you said that it's because of that word specifically. So it's not because of Modica, Italy. No. Did it's you not. even know about that town in we Italy? We really honestly didn't even know about them until we launched, but right? they come up a lot now. You can mention it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like you need to go there now. It does feel like it yeah. at this point. You need to take your bottles and have a photo shoot uh, over yeah, there. Definitely. <laughs> On the home turf. But, um, so how did you two meet? You said you met in school? Yeah. Yeah, we were uh, in business school. We did UofL's Entrepreneurship MBA program, which is a fantastic program. But during the program, we were taking night classes for hours each night, working full-time jobs. So it was just super, super long days. And at the end of those long days, you know, we just basically wanted a really nice cocktail to unwind with. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, even with all of my background and experience, I don't want to juice or infuse anything after a long day. I just want to enjoy a nice right. drink, you know? Yeah, and I <laughs> have none of that experience. I can barely squeeze a lime on a good day. So I was <laughs> never making anything from scratch. Mm-hmm. That's when we started looking at mixers in grocery stores, mm-hmm. very quickly realized everything was full of sugar, preservatives, mm-hmm artificial everything, just nothing that we wanted to drink. Mm -hmm. And we were in business school, we were in an entrepreneurship program, and we Mm -hmm. thought, this seems like a great opportunity. Let's try this. You saw the gap in the market, which is the first key, right? You don't want to go into a market that's saturated. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) So so what was your first recipe? Obviously, you're not squeezing things out here, right, I'm not squeezing them, no. (laughs) It's funny, the flavors have really evolved from what they were originally, and it was really fun to think about what they could be. But it all started in Eric's kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we did a lot of playing around with different ingredients for sweeteners, different superfood components, did a lot of cocktail tasted a lot of cocktails for about a year it was a lot of hard work but somebody's got to do it Mm, mm, yeah well and i think what we were going to get to is it's a can be used as a mocktail mixer too yeah absolutely so and there are some really great options as far as spirit well what is it non-alcoholic spirits spirits. yeah we were talking about those yeah so could you use things like that for your flavor profiles as you are creating your recipe so you're not getting so intoxicated you can't like yeah well, <laughs> make def- more of that definitely. day <laughs> well we wanted to create them you know so they could you could have that versatility aspect you can mix mm-hmm. it with alcohol if you want or with you know club soda or something else to make a mocktail and they still stand up on their own really well in that regard so mm-hmm. 
um, it's crazy when we started, you know, we thought it would be a really small component of our business, just the mocktail mm-hmm. part of it. But and since, what year was this? I mean, let's see, it would be about, it launched in late 2020, but we've been working on it for about four or five yeah. years. So yeah. Yeah. since, you know, inception, it's come a long way. And mm-hmm. since then the mocktail movement has just exploded. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now it seems like almost at least a third of the people buy it for mocktails. It's wild. Mm -hmm. And JD, you had some interesting thoughts on that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Because to Eric's point, I feel like in the last three to five years, especially mocktails have just grown so, so much. And it wasn't until recently when I was really thinking what spurred that. I think it's really, it's grown out of the pandemic and out of quarantine when everyone was kind of famously drinking more than they ever had before. And then couple that with everyone kind of reevaluating their own lives, especially their work situation. So Mm -hmm. how do people want to work? Where do they want to work? And then to that point, how much alcohol do they really want to drink? And Mm -hmm. I think too, there's something about the quarantine and the pandemic that of course really shined a spotlight on health. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about health in tandem with alcohol consumption, Mm -hmm. I think people... Working from home. Yeah, Mm -hmm. totally. Working from home. People don't want to go out to happy hours anymore. They'd rather Mm -hmm. just hang out at their house because they're already there working. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of things converging kind of at the same time. So on the one hand, you saw the gap in the market as far as the clean ingredients not being present in the mixers that were readily available. And then you also just maybe got lucky to ride the wave of yeah, a trend totally, as totally. well. So I've never described it as lucky. <laughs> everything we've been through. Okay. But I love that it seems that way. Yeah. I love that it seems effortless. Uh, well, maybe not effortless, but maybe it will prove to be worth the effort. Yeah. I think so. Because <laughs> more people see they need it, right? Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was... Um, Very excited when um, your representative reached out to me to try these because I have a lot of women friends that are in recovery Mm -hmm. and um, we want to get, have lots of get togethers. I like to throw parties and have people over. Now I do lead people on distillery tours, Mm -hmm. like not as the tour guide, but like coordinating, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of like people who love cocktails and bourbon that I hang out with, but I also want to be able to have all my friends together and I don't want my friends who are in recovery to feel left out. Right. So if we're all drinking a drink that looks the same, Mm -hmm. then nobody is feeling like the odd person out. Right. So I love the flexibility of these, that the flavors work, um, with, alcohol or without Mm -hmm. so thank you for making this i really appreciate your contribution (laughs) and so what did you what was your process like when you're you're coming in business school you're making your recipe and things like that what really helped you get it off the ground here locally yeah Mm -hmm. that's a great question so after we did our very first production That was in late 2020. We thought, okay, let's just hit the ground and see what kind of accounts can we get into. And it was really, it was, it was really great because we would go to all of these local independently owned stores. We would meet the owners. We would do a very quick tasting. We would tell them our story and they were immediately on board. Mm -hmm. And there was something really validating about that, of course, Mm -hmm. because we had been trying and drinking these for so long and Mm -hmm. we understood what we were trying to, to offer and, I felt like we had talked to enough people to make sure people wanted this, but it was still a totally different experience when someone you don't know Mm -hmm. is buying it for their store Mm -hmm. and then you show up a week later and they're sold out. (laughs) It's such a nice feeling to know, oh, okay, so this is landing. This is something that is, um, that people are really resonating with. Yeah, exactly. So did you learn everything you needed to know in business school to prepare you for this? Or did you end up learning a lot of things that you wish were in school? You know, I think business school was a great foundation, but you know, there's no, no possible way to prepare for mm. everything that comes with starting a startup. It's just every day. It's just an adventure. And yeah. I mean, it's, it seems like you just learn so, so much by doing it. Um, people often ask me like, do I need to get an MBA? Do I need to go, you know, get an entrepreneurship MBA program? And I would say it helps, you know, Mm -hmm. sure. Um, But a lot of people just gain all that experience by doing it. So Mm -hmm. I've got the the amount of stuff that I've learned in the two years since we've done this. Mm -hmm. We always joke that our resume is just like forever (laughs) expanding. Like today Mm -hmm. I'm a logistics coordinator. Tomorrow I'm a... (laughs) I'm a marketing expert. Social media expert. Yeah, it's just like so many, wearing so many hats all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's it's a lot of fun. 
definitely keeps you on your toes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how are, do you have employees now? Is it just the two of you still? Just the two or? of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And you kind and of then contract we work with a few contractors as right. needed. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's great. So you're already, you already have Modica in like some Kroger wine stores at Paul's, at Rainbow Blossom. And um, is it available nationwide now? It's available nationwide in the extent that we sell it online. So we're, you can buy it on our website mm-hmm. or also on Amazon. So we so fulfill that shipped. way. Exactly. Yeah. And it's shelf stable until after you open it and then you refrigerate it. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. So you don't have to worry about refrigerating it no. to ship it anywhere. Right. That and it doesn't it have easier. alcohol. So you don't have to worry about shipping that over state right. lines. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's pretty good. And let's see, this one's only 35 calories a serving. Are they all kind of like that? Yeah, most, most of, them of them are in range. So the blueberry lavender lemon drop we're drinking now is one of mm-hmm. our newer flavors. And that one is 35 calories. And then the margarita and the mule are also b- both 35. Um, the cherry is 30. And then the mm-hmm. cacao espresso martini is 40. Okay. Well, good job rattling all that off. <laughs> so the the vitamins that are listed on it, is that something you add externally or are you getting that from the like fruit ingredients? Yeah, there are some naturally occurring vitamins just because we use superfood ingredients and it's all natural, but we really wanted to bolster them so that if you're drinking it as a mocktail, you feel like you're getting those functional benefits as well. Mm-hmm. So we do fortify each of the mixers with a B vitamin blend and then a couple of different kinds of electrolytes strategically the ones that get depleted with alcohol consumption exactly Mm -hmm. right so um this is me just maybe asking a nursey question maybe i should know this i don't know (laughs) um so does mixing it with alcohol just decrease that availability yeah bioavailability it is a great question something you know so there haven't (laughs) been no no that's a great question (laughs) there haven't been a whole lot of studies about vitamin fortified beverages that are also consumed with alcohol it's usually functional beverages you typically think of sports drinks or Mm -hmm. enhanced waters Mm -hmm. so i would say fortified mixers are relatively new to that realm so not a whole lot um not a whole lot of research there Mm. we did talk to a few functional medicine doctors and a few mds before we launched and they all said you know it may deteriorate somewhat. It's not going to hurt you no matter what. Right. So yeah. it doesn't it doesn't hurt to go ahead and try it. So if you're going to go to the added expense and effort of adding these vitamins to the superfood mixer, it would just be good to know if it's going to be absorbed by your body. Um, when you're drinking the alcohol as well, or if it's important to have those repletion of those nutrients after the fact that's just something that i'm thinking of it almost for the totally, moment while totally, we're talking totally. yeah i mean i would say it's definitely more beneficial than not you know mm-hmm. so sure. like, that's our whole premise you're having a cocktail at the end of the mm-hmm. day it's never going to be great for you but it's definitely mm-hmm. much better for you than other mixers for oh, sure. definitely and honestly they're so delicious like i i don't think it matters. <laughs> like, we're just going to have it anyway. So, you guys sent me some samples of these, like, a couple weeks ago. And I've had, like, five different groups of people over here. <laughs> and we've saying. experimented with, like, this a lime Perrier mm-hmm. and um, f- with uh, bourbon, vodka, and uh, Reposado tequila. And um, different... Uh, not dosages, gosh, measurements. <laughs> uh, because you've got your recipes on the bottle, uh-huh. your recommended recipes with alcohol on the bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and then the mocktail recipes, like one part Modica, yep. one part club soda. And then there's a recipe to make a pitcher for super yeah. easy entertaining, which is very helpful. So mm-hmm. we had to try all of those options, <laughs> except That's the research. pitcher, because there were so many flavors and options we wanted to try totally. each separate one so yeah that's my favorite part of these you know as a mixologist you know they're it's just they're so versatile and it's great because they are you know enough to stand on their own but they also make a great blank canvas so Mm -hmm. you can easily add a couple ingredients and make something totally new more elevated it's just honestly whatever you want to do yeah definitely so i'm looking right now at your one of your newest flavors Mm -hmm. blueberry lavender lemon drop and you said this goes really well with vodka usually? Vodka is what we recommend. Anything clear, though, honestly, it'll go with. So your tequila, gin, rum, anything of that nature. Not bourbon? 
You know, I haven't tried it with bourbon yet. I've, well, I've, then how we do we know? To. You, we might <laughs> how are we going to know? <laughs> Only through testing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy to volunteer my if friends' tribute. If you would tribute, do that you know. for us, we really mm -hmm. Right. It, it would take a <laughs> load <laughs> off of us. <laughs> <laughs> I can wrestle up some volunteers. So we can do some, like, blind taste testing or something. Um and then we have, what was the other new flavor you have? The cacao espresso martini. Oh, that sounds so good. It is fantastic. I it's follow got some, some Instagram accounts where all they do is run around trying everybody's yeah. different espresso mm, martini. You wouldn't popular. know there's so many options. Oh, very yeah. trendy right now, but they're notoriously hard to make. There's like a lot of ingredients. It's, it's not simple. So, but now it's mm. literally one part, one part, two ingredients, and you can make it in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And what do you like to make that with? Typically, that one's with vodka. I really like it with Reposado tequila. Okay. Um, it's also really good with bourbon, um, but it's just fantastic. It's got these chocolatey mm -hmm. notes to it from the cacao, vanilla, some sea salt. It's not too sweet, but it's still sweet enough. It's just, it's so, so, so good. That sounds fabulous. And I have had the turmeric ginger mule mm -hmm. um, with vodka, but I like it better with bourbon. Same. Because yep. it's very ginger forward. It and is. so I feel like that bourbon kind of... <sighs> Tames it down a little. It does tame You're the ginger. Totally right. Yeah. yeah. And so, but I saw mule and I was like, oh, obviously I need to try this with vodka. And I was like, or not. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe I just didn't put too much in that well, one. Ginger is one of those uh, flavors you have to love it, and we use uh -huh. fresh ginger, so it's it's very present. Yeah, <laughs> we um, that one I, is probably the most divisive. People uh -huh. love it or they do not. Right, and I had like one friend who drinks turmeric ginger tea every mm -hmm. night, uh -huh. and she was like, "This is perfect." Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and she so. adored it, and it was her favorite. Oh, and I went back great. over to her house, and she needed it again. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if ginger's your thing, you're going to love it. Totally. And then there's a cucumber a la margarita. Mm -hmm. And I did have that with a reposado tequila, but it was also really good with bourbon. Mm -hmm. so, oh, interesting. Because okay. I will default to bourbon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then the tart cherry old-fashioned <laughs> was everybody's, like, overall favorite. Oh, that's, that's great. Awesome. Sure. Which is, I feel like it is hard to find a a mixer that has some complexity to it that's not mm. too sweet mm -hmm. you know yeah i agree because i feel like people err on the side of sweet and sugar yes. when yeah. they're making an old-fashioned yeah totally. i went to a restaurant once where they told me oh yeah we have a really special recipe for our old-fashioned i was like what is it they're like we have a secret ingredient and they brought it to me and i'm pretty sure it's just that they added a lot of simple syrup <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i don't think that's what it means not so secret. <laughs> okay. if there's anything else i can't taste it so uh i absolutely love yours and i'm would have it with the seltzer water or with bourbon or anything. Yeah, I love that. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's so funny. You mentioned the seltzer specifically with the tart cherry. One of my favorite stories, we, for the first couple of years that we launched Modica, we were at farmer's markets all the time. And this woman came up to us and she had a young son with, with her. And she said, oh, my whole family loves the tart cherry. Mm -hmm. We do family happy hours every Friday. My oh. husband and I will have an old fashioned and then we make a mocktail for the kids and we sit around and talk about our week. Isn't that the cutest? I just thought that was That's so adorable. cute. Right. That, is a, that is a Kentucky oh, thing uh, right there. This sure. family moment sponsored by Modica. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. That's precious. Yeah, it was very and then, sweet. like I said, then the people not drinking alcohol can feel included mm. even if they're totally. eight years old exactly yeah yeah i love that so much <laughs> oh, oh my goodness okay so my takeaway from this is we're doing bourbon experiments with the blueberry <laughs> lavender <laughs> lemon drop yeah Please report back yeah um eric i'm sorry but i feel like you need to participate <laughs> in this Deal. because i mean you're the recipe guy let's so, do it yeah um let's see what have we not touched on yet do you oh i was gonna ask you do you have like local resources for new business owners that you found helpful mm -hmm. as you were building this mm -hmm. business that you might recommend to anyone else who's thinking about building a business here in louisville yeah, yeah. that's a great question i'm trying to think there have been frankly so many people who have helped us get mm -hmm. here yeah um, eric and i are the only employees but i feel like we mm -hmm. have a debt of gratitude to so many people mm. So in no particular order, resources sure. that I think of immediately, um, you know, Story Louisville 
holds a special mm-hmm. place in my heart. It's a co-working space in mm-hmm. Nulu, if people are not familiar with it. And I was transitioning from a full-time corporate job to a startup founder, which, you know, notoriously kind of shaky, kind of scary sometimes. Mm-hmm. And the first time I went to Story, it was so fantastic because we connected with so many founders who were doing the exact same kind of thing, had the exact mm-hmm. same kind of vision that we did. Mm-hmm. So that was really fantastic. But there was something else about being in a space that just really felt like everyone is trying to do something really mm-hmm. big. Yeah. And then there were so many other resources. They have so many speakers that <laughs> come through there. They do Founder Fridays where you can practice pitching oh, wow. or where you can review your own deck or all kinds of other resources. So I think that as a baseline for anyone who's just starting to think about launching a business or getting started is really great. Just surround mm-hmm. yourself with people who are doing something similar. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then you don't feel so alone. Oh, 100%. totally. And there's something mm-hmm. about just being in that environment, being that en- energy with other people that are in this in your same shoes. It's really helpful. And there is a really, really great startup community in town. So mm-hmm. just getting plugged into that as soon as you can. And So, Eric, this community of startup support that you've kind of tapped into, it sounds like it's like several different ways to get plugged in. Or yeah. is there like an overall There's... like group? that people can go to there are to there find? are lots of events there's uh venture connectors creative mornings uh, at story like jd was talking about there are a lot of a lot of people there but just there's just a great community that really supports and kind of fosters the whole entrepreneurial culture here and mm-hmm. a lot of great networking and people that are looking to help out with that so i would say getting plugged into that as early as you can is super super helpful mm-hmm. nice. yeah and you don't even have to know about all of them, right? You just yeah. go to one meeting and talk to 10 people, totally. and they're each mm-hmm. going to give you a different resource. Right. And do some of them, like, uh, come to Story Louisville and probably, like, they have, like, a Rolodex, basically, yeah, of something, resources really, for Something similar owners. to that. Yeah. Okay. So something that's really cool, Venture Connectors will have a monthly meeting at Story. So there are always, there's a startup that will present, and then there's usually a main speaker, and... I think since because because there's that startup that's always presenting, there are just a number of startup resources that are always there mm. listening. So mm-hmm. I would say go to that, mm-hmm. talk to ten people. You're mm-hmm. gonna have plenty to follow up on afterwards. It's fantastic, and it really is all about the human connection mm-hmm. and who you know. And it's not about who you know right now. Totally, it's yeah. who you're about to know. Yeah, definitely. when you go meet them. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't <laughs> like so many times. My uh, husband will be like. Why are you going to talk to that person? Um, and I tell him, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm going to find out when I get there. Right. Totally. You totally. don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So yeah. just like us having this conversation, I didn't know I was going to meet someone else who had served in the Peace Corps. Right. Am I getting a message from the universe? No, just <laughs> She's signing up tomorrow. <laughs> no, my kids would not stand for that. No. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, all right then. So um, if people want to order Modica, they can do it on your website. That's right. Yep. Drinkmodica.com um, or on Amazon, whatever is easier mm-hmm. for people. And then did I leave out any stores uh, that it's in you know, Kroger Paul's? Yeah, we do Brand have, awesome. those are the main ones mm-hmm. I would say. We do have a lot of independent stores. And so if you go to our website, there's a store locator there. So you can type mm-hmm. in your zip code and find find a retailer that's close to you. Fantastic. And there's more recipes for the cocktails and mocktails on the website as that's well. That's right. On, yeah. And on our Instagram and mm-hmm. TikTok. Yeah. Lots yeah. of fun recipe videos. Good deal. Well, I can't wait to share more about it and to try these different concoctions. So thank you for sharing. Oh, of course. Yeah. Thanks Cheers. Thanks so much for having All us. All right. And for you listening here, follow at Lou Food Reviews on Instagram and subscribe to this podcast. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.